Okay, hopefully this should show online now. Okay, good. Okay, starting work today on a um a bar on the edge of town on the Project Zomboy build and continuing work on this right here. The last project I had worked on was this um storage facility. storage facility and trailer. I filled in um, the parking lot and also many of the smaller extras such as the sand placement. So doing a short flyover of this before I start work on the tavern, tavern slash bar. If I have time, I'll also work on this small um, trailer park, or at least start work on it, and some of the trailers over here. Now, I begin some of the work on this. Uh, this is where the tree line will meet along this sort of dirt path. Then I'll start begin putting trees in later. This uh, tavern is a bit, it's on the edge of town and a little bit isolated from the other buildings so it can be a good forward operating base because of the stove that it has in it <coughs> that plus it also has um there's it's a two-story building so it's useful and um if you take out the stairway and do a rope ladder from one of the windows it makes it more secure against zombies and this um, bar is called the rusty rifle I think I may have had a stove in it, and I'm going by memory on that. I don't normally come to this part of town when I'm playing the game. And going by the map that I'm using, it doesn't look like it has one, but still, it looks like a good place for a Ford operating base. place to hide out from zombies while you heal if you take advantage of the upper floors
Most of this I am um, did estimations so I could excavate a little bit and basically save time for these streams rather than digging out this entire area. Next, basically, is the question of what uh, um, wall should be, since the building is made out of this wood, and, and it looks like it should be spruce, but I'm using a different texture pack, so it's a choice between dark oak and spruce. And dark oak is just a little bit too dark. Hopefully I've got the dimensions already set up right. So I shouldn't have to do too much adjustments. The first floor is broken down into one, two, three, four, five rooms. The uh, main room, which is the bar, uh, two bathrooms, a room which sort of melds into a hallway and the final room which has the stairs leading upstairs. Now rather than using the same wood like they do in the build, I'm going to use a different wood to differentiate between the um, walkway just outside of the building. Well, the project is on board game. have to get rid of some of these but this is to estimate exactly how large the bathrooms will be two for a hallway And one of the stations I'm listening to while I build is um, Pulse8 on um, YouTube. If you ever get a chance to listen to that, it's very relaxing. Okay, so 
one, two, three, four, five, maybe. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One of the things throwing this off is the fact that these walls are a meter thick. So it's... Each of the rooms that I put into it sort of distorts the building as I go this way. Which is why this room is slightly smaller than it should be. Because of the accumulation of the distortion from these walls. By just switching to three, it makes a huge difference here. Although these rooms are kind of small too, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. In the game, there are bathrooms, and in Minecraft, they could easily be used as storage. Okay, that should get out the basic pattern of this. I'll use um, white hardened clay for the floors of the bathrooms. And I'll use oak for the floors inside of the um, bar itself in the hallway. It looks like it should be maybe birch. And birch is just right here and it doesn't really fit in the pattern or how it looks. As I place down the floor, then I'll just have to put down the front door, and then I'll start building up the walls.
And mostly what I'm doing right now is determining where the window should be. I'm making slits there for the moment because I'll put in some framework for the windows. And the framework isn't anything fancy, it's just simply um, using s stairs to sort of make the windows pop out instead of just being an indented block and bef I guess I'll show the difference between the two to do the windows. And I'll use dark oak for the frames since it'll pop out more. Well, it'll blend and also stand out at the same time. If I were to just do a window pane, then it would end up looking like this. Without a frame, that is. And there's many different frames you could do. You could do a full frame around it or do something as simple as this and it looks a lot different now or you could even blend in the wood Using the dark oak like this, it makes it stand out even more than if I just used the um, equivalent of the rest of the walls, which is this spruce. And on the last window, I'll show how that looks. If I just used the spruce stairs, then it would look like this, which is different, but it blends in with the wall and doesn't offer as much uh, differentiation but that however makes it stand out even more and what I've been saving this birch for is the um, the bar itself inside the bar the tavern I guess I should say
now for the stairs. The um, the line of wood that I'm placing down now will represent the floor of the second floor. The second floor is made up of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rooms. The room coming up the stairs, which breaks into a hallway, leading to the other rooms. It's one, two, three, four, five rooms, which looks like this. this. Individual rooms. One of them having a um, closet and a bathroom on this round here. I'm using slabs basically to um, not see them um, basically trying to keep this room right here is little just a little bit larger it's only a half a block but it makes a difference especially right here in gaps like that You just have to put the block on the upper block of the floor so you can actually use the space above it easier without having things appear to be floating. Since if you're if you place it on the bottom, you can place it on the bottom of a block or top of a block with these slabs. If you place it on the bottom, whatever's above it will appear to be floating. But that's not true right here. And there's some things that you can't place on this block, this slab, that you can place on this one. Because it's flush on where the other block would be. And I'll use um, carpet to represent that. You can place a carpet on this slab right here. Because it's flush with the block above it. But you can't put it in, easily put it on this one. Well you can, but I mean it. If you see it from the side, it looks weird. If you ever see it from the side, it looks weird. But not only that, but the, the other reason is... Let me fix this. If I were to use a full block, then the room would be this big. And it would seem just a little bit more claustrophobic. However, using a slab on the upper part of it, I get this, which it doesn't seem like it a lot, but it's just that little extra, well actually it should be, 
the best representation is to do this. Sorry, I was off. But even this, there's a big difference between this and that. Just that little bit makes a big difference. It will make some to some strange things I have to adjust a little bit for, but that's not usually a problem. Usually this also helps if you want to put carpet, but you don't want to put down a full block of wool. You could put a slab like this and then put carpet on top of it, thus having different flooring and flooring that's different than what the ceiling would be. Because if you were to put a block of wool right here, then the ceiling for this room right here would be red. Whereas now it putting the slab down I could put carpet on the top and not have it interfere with whatever's underneath it or what the ceiling would be underneath it. And I'll adjust the bottom as soon as I get the floor plan for the top just right. slightly complicating things is the roof of this. There's a partial overhang right here. No, got this upside down.
Yeah. spot two no, I need two at least now use birch for the stairways to Roughly the same. And the windows are placed differently, but that fits the setting for the rooms. Uh, say f three doors on this side. This 
the bathroom. This is a small closet. One of the two rooms on this side. This makes this room a bit larger than what it should be. Which means I can make these a bit larger. This one cuts into here. So I'll do this. Uh, hi, thanks for watching. Working on a Project Zomboid build from the game Project Zomboid on Steam and trying to recreate the map on Minecraft. Okay, this fits. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, 18 minus 2, 16, 16 divided by 3, 5, hmm. start counting from this side. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that should work. At the moment, I'm working on a uh, tavern, which is on the edge of the town in um, the main map of Project Zomboid, uh, Knox County, is what the map is called. And this is in a town called Moldrog, and I'm not s completely certain I'm pronouncing it right. The game itself takes place in Kentucky. Just this side. Put in the frames for these doors. I could just put a um, regular block above it, but sometimes putting a 
framework or what looks like it would be a framework sort of helps since when you put in these doors that you just put in a door it doesn't really uh, this it looks weird in a way as it is so it's so just using this to basically uh, show a door frame You know, I'll put in frames for the ones underneath it too. And there's a few things I had to fix, mostly from using the um, slabs on the upper floor. And in a way you can see the the walls upstairs by how the light is diffused within the room and diffused on the slabs. door here, wall right here, door here, small room right here. Some things are a little a bit harder to avoid than others. This has a somewhat steep roof, which flattens out.
one of the things that I think makes this game great is the fact that it's, um, it's a top-down view. And that, um, that also is how the game plays and how the game feels in a first-person view, for example. It's easier to tune out exactly what is going on around you. Uh, and even your senses in this game are muted. In other words, if you can't see or hear something, then a zombie won't appear. But with a first person view, even if you can see and hear them, it's easier to tune them out. But when you're looking at it from above, and if your character can see it, they will appear. Then you actually see more of the horde, which could be bearing down on you. Whereas, if you're looking at it from first person, you see the first row of zombies. And you may miss whatever's behind them. So, I mean, the gravity of the situation isn't as... It's not as apparent. But looking at it from above, you could see, say, for example, 50 zombies. All of them going towards you. And that has a different feel about it. So in a couple ways, a first person zombie game actually spares you from what you're actually seeing. Whereas this one doesn't spare you at all. It lets you know exactly how everything is going. Let you know how outnumbered you are. Let you be surprised in a lot of ways in which you can't really easily do in a um, first person shooter. There's a lot of good things about the game.
And I've got to fix the um, upper part. Upper room now, the ceiling of the upper room. Since currently it looks like this. Most of the torches I'm putting down now is just to give some light to it. They can always be replaced later. Now this does create some flex space that can be used as an attic. So there's a, there's a side advantage to it too. But the, if doing so you... Oh, let's see, there's enough space. you'd have to make some adjustments such as the ceiling a little bit larger since it works but the spaces would be weird because to do anything down you'd have to put it like that so it doesn't create a lot of space but it just creates just a little bit of flex space that is usable
That takes care of the main building for this bar, tavern. Bar slash tavern. And now to work on the parking lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parking spots. That's the length of the parking spots. Seven, eight, no, there's a ninth. Now, oh, this could be used as a parking spot. side it's one two three four five counting this one one two three five one two three four five six one two three four five six two one two three four five six three two three four five six four one two three four five six five And there's a bit of flex space right here. So everything seems to be okay.
Okay, while I fill this in, I'm gonna place some trees and let them grow naturally. Just and if they don't grow before the session's over with, I'll just use um, some bone meal on them. First one I put down is spruce. The spruce tends to be the most fickle of trees when they're growing, especially close to one another. So I'll just let those grow as they will. And how I've been putting down forest down is by putting spruce down first letting the spruce grow or helping them along with bone meal and then coming behind and placing birch and oak trees down where it makes sense and where it can make contrast with the trees around them the birch trees have an easier time growing but even they can be just a little bit finicky. But usually they'll accommodate themselves to the space around them. Oak trees grow just wherever. And the later trees will displace the leaves of the first trees that go, that go in. So I have to keep that in mind too. With oak trees, you can place them right side by side to each other and they'll still grow. But some of the other trees, you can't easily do that. Or you can do it, but you don't always get the results you want. some trees along this side to about right here some of these trees are fairly close to the building a spot up here okay now I'll just let those grow
Off in the distance, you can see some of the work I've done in the forest already. I've done off stream, and I've placed. So far, I've just placed down the spruce in those areas. And uh, once I've completed the tavern area, then I'll do a flyover. It's not really enough time to start work on the trailer park. You know, it's just taking a little bit, a little while for these trees to, to grow. I mean, normally it takes a while anyway, but for spruce, uh, it's best to have patience if you're going to let them grow on their own without the use of bone meal. Fastest growers that I've noticed is um, oak and birch. Oak being the fastest and the easiest to set up a tree farm for. With that in, just go in and just place down birch. Mostly because birch has the. It's a very light tree. So. 
there's good contrast between the birch and the spruce. So I try to place those where it will it'll make the spruce stand out whereas the spruce will help the birch stand out and the birch will help the spruce stand out such as if you're, if you're looking right in here if it were all spruce or all birch or all oak then it wouldn't none of them would really stand out but because there's a good contrast between the three then they all help each other and by giving some definition to the groups of trees that you see Oak, I just place down wherever it, wherever it sort of fits, since oak will pretty much grow wherever you place it. I mean, there's some things that will limit it, but generally it has very few problems actually growing anywhere. And most of the thing is because whenever you're looking at these spruce and these birch trees, you'll note that they all pretty much go, they're different sizes of them, but they don't really vary all that much. But that's not true with the oak trees. The oak trees can have side branches going out. And the amount of variance in height and tree types is much greater than these other trees and part of that goes to it's the flexibility of the tree When I do a fly over, you'll see some of the trees and forests I put in where you can actually see the massive difference between the, them. With birch and with um, spruce, it's just a matter of size. But oaks have a lot of variety that they can come into in terms of shape.
know, mostly I'm just going around placing. Well, when you use bone meal on the ground itself, then you get a chance of growing grass and growing flowers, and depending upon the biome. So I'm just using this to bring more life to this forest. Mostly around the trees. I've done it in some of the areas, such as across this um, walkway. You can see it as I go by. Now I'm not trying to fill the entire area, so I'm just looking for bare spaces. And just using it once. Just letting it fill in as it fills this in. In some places I'm just ignoring it. Some of the places I'm leaving open since basically you see it in nature where in some places that you'll notice some things grow and some things don't. So I'm trying to be more as chaotic as I can be. That should give a better feel of the forest. And right here you can see some of the um, variant oak trees. The spruce trees are all pretty much the same shape. They're different sizes. And the same thing is true of the birch trees. But these are two oak trees in which has side branches coming out of it. And much larger. So they have a greater amount of shapes that they can actually take and actually use. And you can see how this oak displaced many of the leaves of the spruce tree. So you can see nature taking over in a way. One tree taking over the space of another tree. And that looks kind of nice, I think. Okay, this is the tavern from Project Zomboid in Modrog in Knox County on their main map of the game.
It's on the edge of town. And I made a mistake down here. thing I did put off is yeah, this there's a bit of damaged area I think I'll use andesite to represent it with the roads it's easier to do since all I have to do is um pull back the carpet I've used to represent the road and just leave that part exposed but this is a little bit harder okay that's the damaged part of the air and right now I'll just do a flyover of what I've built This is stage one of the how I work on forest right here. I've just put down um, spruce trees and I'll fill in more. Once I've got it, this amount of spruce trees filled in right, I'll start putting down birch trees. And it should it should be this thick around the area, so I have, still had to fill in the rest of this area over here. And you see part of the the main highway on the right here. As you're going into Modrog, the first thing you'll see is the gas station. followed by a diner and a restaurant and I don't have some of the things that I could put in I don't have really have signs that I have in vanilla minecraft so I can't really put diner or many of the things out here that's the bar that I was just worked on here's a storage facility and there's quite a few storage facilities around But I can't really put um, diner out in the front or the name of the business out in front or the, in the case of the bar, the rusty rifle since I don't have letter blocks that I can use. There's a, place, a police station right here. And there's a mini mart. And with many of some of these older builds, I still need to go in to place these um, grown-up areas uh, where the grass is higher. It's an office uh, building, well, office complex. There's two buildings, each of them filled with several offices. On the other side of here is a storage facility, most of the storage units being inside with a few of the units having access to the outside and trailer some of these I've marked out the roads for but I haven't really had a chance to put in the houses yet and I'll be working those as 
putting the houses in as I move throughout the city. The um, sort of um, farmer's market right here. Another mini mall, and there's quite a few mini malls and storage areas on this map. Some of the mini mini malls have one, two, well, three or four stores in them. It's a pizzeria and an abandoned restaurant right here. A park with um, basketball court and elementary school to my left right here soccer right here and an outdoor um, changing area right here and yet another mini mart market this is an appliance store motel this is where I had first started this project since it seemed one of the most iconic um, buildings around another gas station a bank right here This is a chain restaurant called Spiffo's in Project Zomboid. They, has, they have a raccoon called Spiffo, and they use it as a mascot for both the game and for the in-universe um, restaurant chain. There's a sort of a convenience store, and this is a bakery in the game. But with many of these, I've left them empty for the moment. I'm thinking about making two builds. One where it's empty, where if you want to download it and install it onto your PlayStation 4, you can actually decorate the inside of the building however you want. And another fully decorated This one is a chain restaurant called Pala Crepe. And this is attached to a mini mall. Lead into a car repair building. And another storage area. Most of these are on the outside. and a warehouse on the other edge of town and one of the pictures from the steam account for a project zomboid had someone placing out a help thing so i just decided to go ahead and place this right here i'm gonna go and fly over some of the back roads that i put in some of them i filled in with to look like um roadway and some of them I haven't had a chance to fill in yet such as this one right here But it'll give them better sense as to how this build is. And as to how large this build is, it's going to fill up the entire map. And quite a few of it's going to be woodland areas, but still it's going to... It's the largest map on the PS4.
I can't put the entire map for Project Zomboid on it, but I can get a good area. I can, I can get Modrog, the, the center town in it, and a good area around it. And this is where I've been working recently, not necessarily on the stream, but setting up a ro railway. And you can see part of it under construction right here. And this is how the railway will look basically. You can see it on this side. I'm going to replace this grass block with um, dirt. And here's the more the final version of how it will look. And the diagonal. And I know doing diagonal on this is a headache. But I decided to end up doing it this way. and where the tracks join. And so far everything I've measured out has roughly worked out. There is one slight hiccup but it's not a huge one over here. It's in a large build it's easy to get as you're working with distances to get um, measurements uh, thrown off. But this one lucked out to where this road right here lines up with another road over there. But the outer edge of the road way over there lines up perfectly with this road. And I'll fly over there. The roads are slightly off to where they should be, but they're not off by very much. And for a large build like this, it's pretty pretty good to get the measurements this close. And even better when the edge of one road lines up perfectly with the edge of the other road. And this I was doing blind. I didn't know that they would... I thought they would be close, but I didn't know the edges would be lined up like that. And as you can see with how long it's taken to actually get to the other road, just how much um, measurements and distances 
are actually involved. And getting to the road I just left, I had to do measurements from the main road. So, I mean, it's, it's a lot involved. Here is where the other road is, and it lines up perfectly with the edge of this road. The right edge of this road lines up with the left edge of the road I just left. And really they should be a little bit closer together, but it's probably a little bit closer together, but it really fits in. And it's pretty amazing how close it is given the distortions that appear with Minecraft such as these markings being a meter long I've got these extra um, uh, sidewalk parts right here which are a bit larger than they are on the map so I mean it's a lot involved and how far it will continue is basically it's going to be the entire map. I'm going to extend out right here and I think I should be able to get uh, one more market right out in this direction which should be on the edge of this map. And I might be able to get that in with no problem given the distances I won't be able to get in any of the other towns off in this direction is uh, West Point a town called West Point but it's just a little bit too far off unless there's a um, update that allows even larger maps on the PS4 but even still, it is going to be a large map to move around in. And that's it for this stream. Thank you very much for watching. And I think the next, next stream I'm going to be working that I do the Project Zomboid build, I'm going to be working on the trailer park that I was thinking about working in on the last part of this build with. Anyway, thank you for watching.